Hi everyone, uh, this is going to be a walkthrough video to show you how to get up and running with pretext on Windows. Uh, and we are going to be using the pretext CLI, um, the command line interface, which is installable as a Python package. Uh, so um, to get started here, I'm, I'm assuming that we don't really have anything installed or set up. We've got a basic Windows installation. Uh, with one exception, I've already installed MicTech, which is a LaTeX distribution for Windows. Um, and if you're already editing LaTeX on your Windows computer, you probably have that installed. Um, you might have TechLive instead. I don't know. Maybe you're using Overleaf. Um, if you don't have LaTeX installed on your Windows computer, um, you'll need to do that first. Um, one warning, the first time you use MicTech, uh, you do have to run like an update before it will function. Um, so that's a step that you should go through. Um, but we'll, we'll skip doing the MicTech installation. But uh, I am going to go through installing uh, Git for Windows, Python, VS Code. We're going to install all those. Uh, one additional sort of uh, helper tool that you need. And... Um, it will get pretext installed and we'll demonstrate using it to start a new project. Okay. Um, we'll see if we can also go through some of the steps of hooking things up with GitHub. All right. Um, one other installer that you can see here, uh, which I'm not going to use, is uh, installing node.js, um, and uh, which you probably don't need. The only reason to install that is you get the npm uh, package manager. There is one utility uh, that pretext installs using uh, an npm which is a uh, which is called page res which is used to take screenshots of web pages you probably don't need that unless you have um, let's say interactive elements like say geogebra um, interactives in your book or if you're using um, videos that are not YouTube videos like uh, maybe Vimeo or something like that uh, then you might need it um, it's really it takes a long time to install and it's a bit of a pain so I'm not going to uh, do it um, if you do need that I would recommend installing it before you install anything else uh, I found that um, the first time I did this I installed Python first and then uh, when you install Node, it wants to install its own version of Python, and it kind of wipes out the one that you'd already done. Um, so I would do Node and then Python. Okay. All right. Uh, so we're going to start with uh, Git for Windows, uh, mostly because we want the Git, git bash command prompt. Uh, that's going to make things a little bit easier for us moving forward. Okay. So um, go to gitforwindows.org. You hit the download button and you'll get the git installer. So I'm going to run that first. Uh, we agree to the public license, choose the folder. I've installed this once and then reinstalled, um, just so you can see how things go as we do this. Um, the usual kind of choices that we want to make here. Um, do we want to add, uh, I don't know, let's say yes to that. Um, let's check for updates. Sure, let's go. Um, and well, oh, okay, here we go. Uh, default editor. Um, I guess we could use VS Code. I don't have it installed yet. Um, I don't know. I'm gonna go with Nano. It's a simple editor. Um, I don't know. I I will admit I never quite learned Vim. Uh, what can I say? All right. So I'm gonna say next. Um. I'm going to just choose the defaults here. Let's go through this. Um, okay, use the recommended setting. Okay, and um, use the bundled SSH. Sure. Uh, use OpenSSL. Um, okay. Sure, let's do that. Um, sure. Okay, choose the default. There we go. There's lots of things to choose here. I'm just going to choose the... Uh, um, there we go. Uh, I don't think we need that. Okay, so that's going to get up and running. Uh, while that's installing, uh, the next thing that you're going to want is Python. Okay, 
So uh, on the python.org website, um, we're not going to do Anaconda. That puts in way more stuff than we need. Just go to python.org. Okay. Um, go to the download section. Um, and uh, there's grab your latest Python 3.10.4. Okay. Um, anyway, you can choose your files. You want the uh, Windows 64-bit package, or I guess you want the Windows installer, rather, down there. Okay. So that's what we have. Um, this is done. We don't want to view the release notes just yet. Okay. Uh, now, what that's given us is this git bash command line program. Okay, um, along with a few other things. Now, um, I've got a couple of files already in there. There's some setup there that's been done for me. I'm going to have to show you that because, as I said, I set this up once and then uninstalled. So you can watch me install it. Um, I'll talk about that setup in a bit. Okay, so git bash is up and running. Uh, let's put that over here. Now let's install Python. Okay, uh, now, uh, one important thing when you're installing, make sure you check this box here, add Python 3.10 to path. Okay, that's gonna make sure that in git bash over here, we can actually find it. Okay, um, so we check that box, we hit install now, we say yes, and we let that run. There we go, shouldn't take too long. Okay, uh, next up, we're going to do VS Code. Now, uh, there are other editors that work well. Um, there are actually three editors that work um, with pretext in the sense that they have support for the pretext syntax. Um, one is uh, Sublime Text. Another one is Atom, which is the text editor that kind of uh, is supported by GitHub. Um, personally, I like Atom. Um, and if you, um, if you want to use that one, Atom Text Editor. Um, there it is, Adam.io. You can download that. Um, I I like it. Um, one of the things I like about Adam is I like the controls that it has for managing my stuff on Git. I can easily um, commit, uh, push to GitHub, and I can do it all with kind of a point and click interface. I don't necessarily need to always use um, commands from, let's say, the GitHub terminal here. Uh, or the git bash terminal. So if you prefer Atom, go with Atom. Uh, the reason why I'm going to go with VS Code is the pretext CLI that we're going to install, uh, it can actually be run from VS Code, uh, which is kind of cool. So I'm going to try to demonstrate how that works. Anyway, uh, let's install VS Code. Here we go. Um, there it is. Just took a while to start. I thought it wasn't working. I'll accept the agreement. Okay. Sure, we'll do that. Um, we want to add it to the path. Yes, register the code. Um, add open with code. Okay. All right. Install. And now, I guess one thing that maybe in terms of the order in which I installed these, I guess in hindsight, maybe I should have done VS Code first, because um, that would have given me the option when I installed Git Bash of saying that I want to use VS Code as my default editor. Um, probably you can change that later in the settings if you, if you need to. Okay, I don't want to launch it just yet. All right, we're all up and running. So, um, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to close that for a second. Uh, we can close this uh, window with all the things that we wanted to download. Uh, now, um, let me open up Git Bash. There we are. Okay. And just to confirm that we have Python installed, I can do which Python like you would in, uh, in Linux. It finds it, right? So that's how we know that um, Python is there. It's installed. Um, and now that we know that Python is there, we can use commands like pip. And here's how you install pretext on a Windows computer. Once you've got git bash up and running, uh, pip install pretext book. That's it. Okay. Um, there we go. Now, um, I had already done this install, um, so that's why it's saying requirement already satisfied for this, right? It was. Um, 
I uninstalled Python, but I guess the uh, the pretextbook program that was installed um, was still sitting there somewhere in Windows. Okay, great. Um, that's up and running. Now, there's only one other thing that you might need to do, which is um, if you have uh, LaTeX images in your pretext book, so if you have um, a Tix image, for example, uh, the uh, pretext CLI uh, script, one of the steps that it's going to do is it's going to want to generate SVG images for the HTML version of your book. And so when you run LaTeX to, you know, so first of all, LaTeX needs to be installed, right? We have MicTech installed. So LaTeX is going to run, uh, process all the images in your book, and of course, you're going to get PDF as the output. Um, now you need to convert those to SVG. Uh, so there is a program that does it, which is this PDF to SVG. And I, there's no kind of like download the executable that I know of. Um, I did some searching around, couldn't find one. So the best thing to do is you go to this GitHub page. Uh, I'm just going to copy the URL. Okay. Now back over in my um, terminal here, my git bash terminal, we can go git clone. And then I'm just going to paste. Okay, shift insert if you want, or just right click and paste. Paste in that URL. Okay, um, there we go. Uh, I'm not actually sure what, where, where am I right now? Um, C slash user slash John. Okay, um, and so now there's a PDF to SVG Windows folder there. Okay, fine. Um, now, Right now, if I say, okay, do I have PDF to SVG? Um, it can't find it, right? So what we have to do is we have to go and you type path. We have to add it to the path. So you type path. You see this edit the system environment variables, okay? So this thing pops up. You click on environment variables. You go to path, edit, okay? Uh, and now we want to add a new item to the path. So we are going to just go browse. And so let's see if we can find that. There it is, PDF to SVG. Okay. Add that folder. Okay. Hit OK. Hit OK again. Hit OK a third time. And let's see. I might need to reload, but let's find out. Yeah. So maybe I'll just. Um, Close that, open it again, and let's try one more time and see if it works. Oh, it still can't find it. Um, let me see. Oh, hang on a second. I might need to um, go a little bit further in specifying that path. Let me see. Okay, environment, variables, path, edit. Um, for this one, Browse. Okay, so PDF to SVG. And then I probably want the 64 bits folder. Okay, try adding that on. And let's see if that fixes it. And not yet. Um, it's possible that we need to do like a, a system restart, right? Uh, That might happen. So let's see. Oh, no, there it is. Okay. You can find it. Good. Um, it's always annoying when you're, you want to do a recording of something on Windows and it says, oh, now you've installed these things, you got to reset. That really kind of messes up your recording. Um, anyway, that's up and running. So at this point, we've got Pretext installed. Uh, we've got the utilities that it needs all installed. So we've got um, We've got MicTech installed as a LaTeX distribution. We've got this PDF SVG um, conversion tool installed. Um, we haven't installed this PageRes thing, which um, is used by NPM, or, or so used by Pretext to do these screenshots. Uh, you need a whole, there's a whole other thing for that. Um, and probably for some other image format conversions, like if we needed to convert something to a PNG, for example, um, we might need tools for that, but um, 
for kind of a basic setup, um, we should be good to go here. Okay. Um, so now um, I'm going to change to my documents folder. And um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this. I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to add a new directory. And you can use, it's nice thing about git bash, you can use Linux commands on, on Windows. So make directory um, pretext. That's going to be where maybe all my pretext books live. Okay. CD pretext. Okay. Now, um, let's just confirm that we have this pretext CLI installed. So pretext version 0.6.3, right? We're up and running. Excellent. So now I can do this pretext new book. Okay. So it has created a new book, right? Um, and it's at pretext slash new pretext project. Now maybe I want to rename that. Um, so I should be able to do that with MV on git bash. So new pretext project. I'm just going to rename it to let's say demo. Okay, and now I'm going to cd into demo. Okay. And in fact, why don't I here? Um, sort of in the file explorer, um, I'm just going to grab, hang on. So, just going to get to the right place. Let's bring that back up. Okay, um, so here's that demo folder that was just created by the pretext CLI. And here's everything that you actually need to build a pretext book. Okay. Um, assets, publication, source, git ignore, all of this sort of stuff, okay? Um, it's all there. In fact, everything you need to build the book is there. So let's see how we can do this. If I go um, pretext um, build HTML, success, right? Now notice what happened here in the folder. Um, a couple of new uh, I should have actually put this where we can see it. Um, this generated assets folder was created. This output folder was created. Okay. Um, the output folder is where that HTML now lives. Okay. And as it says, we can do this pretext view HTML to see the results. Okay. Um, so we want to, I guess we'll just copy that. Come over here paste, and there we are. We've built our book, right? Um, so that's, a, you know, that's all it takes to get up and running as far as, uh, you know, creating your first pretext book, right? Uh, now, at this point, we, you know, this is a pretty empty book, right? There's, there's not much in here. There's just some sort of basic demonstrations, um, examples, right? There we are. There's the solution, okay? Um, so we're, you know, this isn't an actual book that we would want to show to anyone, but let's pretend that it is, okay? Uh, now, if you actually have a book that you've already written in pretext and you, now you want to build it with the CLI, um, well, you can you can do that too, right? So let's say I go to, here's a book that I've written, okay? I'm going to... Uh, copy. In fact, what I might want to do here is I'm going to actually copy using SSH. And, and here's where we're going to now get into, um, you know, there, there's other issues that we got to deal with there. So um, this is working for me. So um, because I've already got it set up, so I can copy that. I'm going to show you what you need to do um, otherwise. So go over here and let's close that. Let's shut down that um, server. Okay, um, and where am I? Um, okay, so let me go back one level and let me now clone this, uh, this other book. Cloning into there. There we are. Okay, so now let's change into there, math 3410. Okay. And we can do the same thing. And now I'm actually going to do one more thing. I'm going to add a minus D. 
What is the minus D? That's telling it to build any diagrams that might appear in the book, and I've got a couple. So let's let's see if this works. Generating LaTeX images. I think there's one. I don't have a lot of images in this book, so it shouldn't take too long. There we go, right? Um, there's a little bit, there's like one YouTube video, there's like one asymptote diagram, there's like one Tix image in the book, and it's uh, it's taking care of all those things, right? Um, I don't have to do anything. You know, it used to be that with, for pretext you had to kind of like, there were separate things, all of these were separate steps that you had to do. Um, or maybe you had to like write a make file or, or you know, um, wasn't particularly Windows friendly to get all these things done. But um, now it's building the HTML. It takes a little bit longer because it's a bigger book. Um, it's uh, depending on the size of the book, there's a point at which uh, this does take significantly longer than a LaTeX build, but you know what? We can live with it. There we go. It's done. It's built, right? So again, uh, pretext view HTML. Um, come back up here. Let's say, you know, there's that local host. Uh, now, <laughs> we can't find that page, so we just go back to localhost 8000 because we've got our new book now. There we are, right? There, we've built our book. Um, and, you know, we've got... Uh, for example, there's one asymptote diagram, as I mentioned, that's in there. Uh, we can see that. Uh, the nice thing about this pretext view command compared to if you just open the HTML file is that things like this asymptote diagram here won't show up if you just open a local copy of the HTML file in your web browser. Um, there are certain security exceptions that stop that from happening. And uh, look at that, you can move it around. Uh, which is pretty cool, all right? Uh, and this particular book, by the way, has a few other extra features built in, like um, you can sign in with Hypothesis to do highlighting and annotation if um, if you're interested in doing those sorts of things. Okay, now, um, let's close out of there. We got one more thing to talk about. Um, if you want to kind of be fully up and running, and, and in particular, if you want to now get your book up on the web, right? Um, we haven't done that yet. Now, um, this is the uh, this part that takes a little bit longer. Uh, connecting GitHub with SSH, okay? Um, now, I already have some SSH keys. Um, I've done this once already. So, um, if I go over to my git bash, I can confirm that, in fact, we have those. Okay, so tilde SSH. Okay, I've got a couple. IDRSA, we can see that it's there. Um, now, maybe, let's say this time I actually want um, to do a different uh, type of key. Maybe I want to do like an ED25519. Let's do a different one this time around, okay? So we go to the next step generating a new SSH key. Uh, and this is one of the places where it's really nice to have Git Bash installed. Um, I'm not really sure how to do this in Windows otherwise, to be perfectly honest. So we uh, just type in the command that we're given here, SSH key gen, minus T, E, D, 2, 5, 5, 1, 9, minus C, and I guess I guess you're going to learn my email address here, but you know what, what the hell do with the Bash, huh? It's not like you can't find it online. Anyway, um, that has to be the email address that you use um, for your GitHub account, by the way. So enter a file, which you can just hit here, take the hit enter twice. Uh, just take the defaults. There we go. All right, we've created a new SSH key. Great, um, it's all done. Now um, we have to add the key to the SSH agent. So this part here is, is I think, for Windows users, maybe one of the less user-friendly steps that you have to do, okay? So we need to do this command here, eval, quote, dollar sign, parenthesis, SSH agent, minus S, close parenthesis, quote. Okay, agent PID, there we are. So now um, the SSH agent is running, um, and we gotta do SSH add, 
to the... Ah, yes. By the way, um, don't do what it says here. This is... Um, you will run into trouble if you do this. Um, you need to actually add the full path, and you can just see it up here. Sorry for the small text in Git Bash, by the way. I, I don't know. It's the default text size. Um, you need to actually give the full path that you see up here. So um, don't do the relative path like GitHub says because it won't work in Windows. I don't know why, uh, but it really doesn't work. So we got to do C. So for me, it's users, Sean, um, dot SSH slash ID underscore ED 25519. Okay. So there. We've added that. All right. Um, now, don't worry about the hardware security thing. Uh, the next step is we need to add that SSH key to GitHub. Okay. Um, so what we do now is we can, in fact, um, what we can do is just go um, into that .ssh folder. Okay. Um, and open the, I don't know, just open the pub file. Well, um, you can, there's a few ways to do it, but on Windows, just open the file. Um, and it'll open up in, in VS Code. In fact, it opened on my other monitor. Let me slide that up so you can see it. Okay, there it is. Um, so you copy this key, all right? Just select all, copy, um, close that. Okay, now in GitHub, you go into settings, SSH keys, new, uh, and we do kind of, you know, let's do this Windows demo. And here you just paste in that text that you found. There we are. Okay, add SSH key. Okay, password goes in, and there's the new key. Um, by the way, I'm going to get rid of that eventually, but you know, there, it's there for now. Okay. Um, so if we needed that key in place, uh, it's there. And then we can, you know, if we need to test the connection, okay, we can uh, go back over here and let's just check SSH minus T, uh, git at github.com. There we go. Works. Okay, yeah. Um, by the way, if you've never connected to GitHub from Windows before, first you'll be asked to uh, accept this uh, RSA key from GitHub. You say yes, uh, and then you'll get the message like you see here. Okay, great. Um, we are up and running. Now, uh, one other thing. Um, when you um, first set this up, if you close Git it's, you know, and then reopen it, Git Bash, uh, that SSH agent that is running right now, it doesn't start by default, which which can be a little bit annoying. So how do you actually make it start by default? Well, um, you can set up a bash profile and a bash RC file, just like you would do in Linux. Um, Git Bash comes with those. And I believe in the bash RC um, is where we want to, right. Uh, now I just kind of Googled like, you know, Git bash, you know, start as I can't remember what Google, you know, anyway. Um, so uh, I searched online, how do we make sure that the SSH agent starts whenever you start Git bash? Um, let me see. In fact, why don't I let's hop over. Um, let's say auto start um, SSH agent uh, Git. Bash. And and you know it's not even specific to Git Bash because you know it's it's any any Bash shell it'll do the same instructions. But um, we could uh, here we are. In fact, this first um, this first hit um, that's exactly what I used. Okay, so uh, that's exactly what I used. Uh, only one other thing in the Bash RC um, a, a CD into um, my uh, sort of default, um, you know, my user folder, their home folder, um, so that when you open Git Bash, you're kind of where you want to be. Um, 
There's also a little bit that you have to add into the um, this bash profile. Um, you need a couple of uh, well, you don't even need that much. That'll probably just be started automatically. Okay, so not so bad. Um, you know the this is I admit this is you know if you are, are a typical Windows user that doesn't deal with kind of any of this sort of stuff, this can look sort of intimidating. But um, if you're willing to just kind of uh, trust the person who uh, who wrote this web page, you can copy and paste and drop it in, and you're you're good to go. Okay. Uh, oh yeah, those two lines we did need them in the uh, in the bash profile it comes from there as well. Okay. Um, so one last thing we're gonna do uh, that you know demo book that I wrote. Um, well, not wrote, created. Right. Maybe we want to publish the book to GitHub, right? So right now, that's not a Git repository. Um, so let's make a new one. Um, let's call it My Demo. Okay. Now, um, there's a few ways to do this. If you're familiar with Git and the command line commands for Git, you can go through the whole like Git init and do all that stuff from Git Bash. Um, but uh, I'm just going to say, okay, uh, demo site for pretext. Um, and I'm going to initialize here on GitHub. So I want to add a readme file. Um, I'm going to add a git ignore um, with, I don't know, there isn't a useful template to be honest, so we'll just say none for the, the template. Um, I'm not going to bother setting up a license. Okay, um, create repository. There we go. All right, now um, we have that there. And now I can clone that. Okay, so I'm going to open GitHub. And where am I again? Okay, in the pretext folder. Good. So I'm going to git clone. And I'm just going to um, put that in my demo.git. Right. At the moment, there's, there's nothing in there, right? cd my demo. There's the readme file. Um, I guess we didn't actually add the git ignore because I didn't choose a template. Um, once you kind of, you know, um, we probably want to, let's make that uh, uh, git ignore file. Git ignore. There we go. Okay. Um, so now I'm actually going to go, um, you know what I'm going to do? This demo folder that we created, I'm going to copy everything from there, right? We'll do the, win I mean, you know, this is a Windows approach, so we're just going to do copy-paste using the GUI. Why not? Um, has two files with the same name. Um, what are they? Uh, let's see. Let me decide for each file. Um, uh, the git ignore and the readme. Uh, okay. Uh, let's uh, take the files already in my. Actually, um, let's do that one. Let's see what the git ignore that pretext gives us looks like. Um, Ah, nice. So the pretext CLI actually um, puts in right um, the folders that we don't really want to track in Git output generated assets. Um, that's nice. So we actually get that for free. We don't need to worry about it. Um, I guess it provides a readme file if we want to use it. Um, but we've got those there. Okay. So now um, if I look over at my um, my demo folder, we can see that we've got uh, we've got all kinds of stuff there that we need to add, right? So we're just going to um, add everything. Uh, in fact, we'll just, let's just, you know, we shouldn't normally do this, but let's just add it all. Git add star. Um, these warnings are um, to do with the fact that 
Um, line endings in Windows are different from line endings in Linux, and if you collaborate with somebody who's on a Linux or Mac computer, you want to make sure that your uh, your end of line characters match what they're dealing with. Okay, so now uh, we're going to do git commit minus m. We put a message in, uh, say initial commit, something like that. Okay, there we are. Git push. Okay. So we've put our book up on GitHub, and in fact, if we want to go back here, uh, reload the page, we can see that it's all there. Okay. Um, so that's all good. I'm going to show you one more cool thing that you can do, and then we're going to wrap things up here. Um, the pretext CLI also comes with a command, which is this pretext deploy. Um, so. Hang on, pretext is not found. Oh, no. oh, because I spelled it. I didn't put the T on the end. There we are. Okay, pretext deploy. So, what did it do? What what the pretext deploy command actually did is in my folder, it created a new folder called docs, and that just contains a copy of all the HTML. Um, but it didn't just create that folder, it pushed it to GitHub. So if I reload the page here, now I have that docs folder. Okay, uh, now um, one of the things that I can do is over in the settings on GitHub, I can go down to pages. So this is using this GitHub pages feature. I go to pages, I say source, um, main branch, and then the docs folder. Click save. Okay. Now, uh, it says it's ready to be published. There's nothing there yet. So while that's working, I do want to show you one more thing. Um, back in VS Code, um, we want to go, is it view? Um, yeah, I don't know why this view seems like a really weird place to put it. But anyway, view extensions, pretext tools. OK, it was already installed for me. Um, because I did this before, and I guess when you uninstall VS Code, it doesn't uninstall the extensions. Okay, uh, that's weird. But anyway, uh, what does Pretext Tools do for me? Well, it does a couple of things. First of all, um, here's my, uh, I'm going to open this My Demo folder. I trust the authors, yes. Um, if I now look in my source folder at, for example, um, uh, let's see, section, first examples. Here's my, uh, you know, this default section that was written, um, created by the pretext CLI when you do the pretext new book. And, and you get syntax highlighting, right? Um, now, uh, this is a silly reason, but one of the reasons I like Atom a little bit better than VS Code is I, I like their syntax highlighting better. Um, I like the colors they use. I find VS Code is a little bit drab. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. One of the nice things about this is, you know, let's say I wanted to make another example. And, well, one, this looks like a lot of work to type out all these tags. Two, you know, are you going to always remember, like, what is the, you know, what are the rules? Like, okay, an example needs to contain a statement. The statement needs to contain a paragraph. Um, you know, well, you can actually just start typing, like, example. Okay, um, and then there we are. Example tab. Oh, actually, I only did that. Hang on. Let me try again. Example. That's just the ABC. EG. Oh, that's disappointing. Um, example with solution. Let's try that and see what happens. Oh, there we go. That puts everything in, right? So it has all the built-in stuff for us. If we wanted to do an exercise, um, it gives us some options there, right? Uh, it's a exercise uh, division, worksheet, exercise, just let's say a numbered exercise, sure. Okay, exercise number equals, we can do that. Um, or if we wanted to do something like a theorem, THM for theorem, there's everything we need to put a theorem in, right? Um, so 
that is kind of nice that you don't have to remember all the tags. It's all built in for you. The other thing that's nice is um, in the command palette, if you go view command palette or you just start remember this control shift P, um, some of those pretext um, CLI commands are actually built in here in VS Code and you can run them from the command palette, right? So build HTML. I can just kind of choose that and there. We built, we built the book um, without actually leaving VS Code, um, right? That's pretty great. Um, you could do the same thing for if you wanted to build the PDF for the LaTeX version, you can do that as well, right? Uh, okay, now one last thing and then we'll wrap things up. Um, coming back over to this GitHub pages, right? Click on that and hey, there's the book and it's published, right? At uh, github.io, my demo, there it is. The book's online, you know, that's not so bad, right? Okay, it's 40 minutes, it's a little long, but hey, we went from pretty much nothing to working pretext and a published book in, in 40 minutes. Um, yeah, I'd say that's all right.